Hello everyone, this is Professor Giles with AR105. I wanted to talk to you a little bit tonight about how to create a critical analysis. This is going to be the one of the primary assignments for week two of AR105. And I want to make sure that you have it down. Uh, to me, this is one of the more important types of assignments that we do for the class because this is what you do every time that you go to a museum. This is what you do every time that you see a piece of artwork in a magazine or out in public somewhere. If you can get this down, you can increase your enjoyment of art tremendously. And even if you don't like the piece of artwork, this will help you understand it better and at least appreciate it. Okay, um, in the very first video lecture that I did, I did a um, description of, of how to go about doing the critical analysis, but I thought it was important here to have a piece right in front of us to go over. Okay, um, I also have up in front of us um, a piece of art or the um, assignment sheet that I will be sending you via email. Whoa, okay. Um, so here we have our piece of artwork by Monet um, and the assignment sheet explaining how to do it. Um, first off, when you see a piece of artwork, what I like to do is stand back from it. Get as far away from it as I can. Um, here, even if you have it up on your computer screen, walk across the room and take a look at it and get an overview and then get up close to it and try to see all the details. If it's a sculpture, look for chisel marks. If it's a painting, look for brush strokes. Okay. Now, as you do the analysis, one of the primary things you don't want to do is create a judgment. Do not judge the piece of artwork at the very forefront. You wait until you do the analysis and then after you've delved into it and you've really studied it for a time period, then you can make your judgment on it, okay? Don't look at a piece of artwork and say, oh, it's pretty, or oh, I hate it, or my five-year-old little brother could make that. No, go into the artwork, study it first, analyze it, then do your judgment. And, and this is an opinion. Once you get to the interpretation part and the judgment part, it's your judgment, okay? It's very subjective um, at that point, okay? So at the forefront here, let's look at describe, the first step that we do. And um, take these just step by step. It might seem a little, little overwhelming at first, but if you go step by step and just do one sentence at a time and another sentence at a time, and move through it that way, it can become very easy. And because you probably won't have a textbook with you at a museum um, telling you the full story of a piece of artwork, I want you to learn this so that you can do it on the fly. Okay, so back to describe. You're talking about the visual facts of your piece, and what you want to do is create an image in the imagination of your reader. Assume that they have never seen this piece of artwork before, and you're trying to communicate to them what you are seeing. Um, another way to think about it is, what if you have a blind person that you're trying to communicate with about this piece of artwork? Um, and this actually happened to me. I had a student in an art appreciation class who was blind. And that really stretched me as a professor, but it also stretched me on how to communicate what we're seeing. So the visual facts here are the artist, the title, the date of its creation. What is the media? What's it made of? Um, sometimes the dimensions, that's always good to put, and, and location is good. Um, what we have here is a Claude Monet oil painting called Impression Sunrise. 
It's an oil on canvas. I don't have the size here. It's not very big. Um, 1873, and you can see that it's in Paris. Okay, and then go about looking at the whole composition and describing it. Here, very quickly, uh, without a lot of detail though, um, that it appears to be either a sunrise or a sunset over a bay or um, a body of water with land in the background. In the foreground is water that seems to be somewhat tranquil. On the water are three boats, um, small little boats with people sitting in them. Um, the one towards the front is in the middle at about a third up the canvas. There's another one diagonally to the upper left, um, about halfway to the left edge. Then there's another one about halfway to the left edge. The front boat is very black colored. The middle one is black colored, but the next one is blue colored. Um, on the surface of the water, there is reflections of the sun in orange. There's a disc in the far background about one third of the um, way up or down from the top and the orange disc of the sun. And then about two thirds of the way up, just above halfway, is a bluish horizontal line with lots of detail built on it that look like there are cranes, tall masted ships, um, shoreline, uh, making up the middle ground. The sky is sort of a burnt orange. The middle ground there of the earth is blue tints and colors, and then the water is mostly light blue and some dark blue in it with the little ripples in the water created with dark strokes that are small. Um, the main body of the water is made up with very large strokes of different tints of blue. Okay, That pretty much would be a description. Okay. Now for an analysis, this is the part where, again, no judgments, where we're looking at line, color, shape, form, texture, and then principles of design, focal point, symmetry, balance, proportion, and so on. What I'd like you to do for this class is focus on line, color, shape, form, texture, the visual elements, and then include at least one of the principles of design. Now, remember these are qualities, these are descriptive words, and you want to go through, and again, go through piece by piece. So if we're talking about line, I would say that overall, there are many different lines to create this piece. The main background and the foreground, the main colors are made with very large brush strokes. They're very wavy, free form, and really cannot be um, defined as individual brush strokes. But there are some small brush strokes in the water making up the ripples, and those are mostly um, thin, short, choppy. The blue lines that make up most of the earth and the uh, industrial area here are angular, long or thin. For color, we could say that the background sky is sort of a burnt brown or orange, depending where it is in comparison with the sun disk. A little bit of yellow. The middle ground of the earth is our various tones of blue, um, some deep blue, some light blue, but mostly almost like a grayish blue would be a better description. The 
SunDisk is a, a warm orange with a bit of red in it. The ripples across reflecting the sun have the same colors. Got a cat going over me here, sorry. The color of the water is mostly blue, but there are hints of purple and yellow. There are dark, dark, dark blues. There are some light blues. And especially the choppy lines making up the ripples are very dark. And then the darkest part is this boat in the near foreground, what appears to be two people in it, that is very black oriented. Um, the shape, since this is a 2D object, since this is a 2D object, um, it's rectangular, but within the actual piece itself, it's divided up into thirds. Um, the bottom third rectangle is from the bottom up to the boat in the foreground, and then the middle third is from that boat up to the horizon, and then after that, the top is the sky. So it very much has uh, rectangular shapes within it. Now, the shapes made up by the various brush strokes are very amorphous, um, all kinds of different shapes built into it. Okay, texture. The textures here are very rough, um, especially back on the sky, on the, the earth part in the background. Uh, but in some ways, the water here is actually would seem very, very smooth. Okay, so we've done describe, we've done the analysis, no judgments in that at all. Okay. Um, next interpretation. What do I think about this? What's the message? Well, for this, I would say this is a early morning seascape with people in little boats trying to get out to um, other boats, out to ships, or to go fishing. Um, it's very industrial. What look like cranes in the background and tall masted ships maybe taking their their goods and wares from um, around the world to Paris or to take the wares from Paris around the world. What do I think the purpose of this is? I think the artist is just trying to document what he is seeing in, a, in his environment, that he is probably seeing early morning sunrises that are very calm and that the, they have interesting color that he wants to represent and recreate. Is this piece significant? Well, knowing the history, yes, this is a significant piece. Uh, from this piece is where um, the whole name of the art movement of Impressionism comes from, that it's just the impression. It's not detail. It's just this impression, almost like a sketch of what a sunrise would be. So that's my interpretation of it. And then finally, I get to make a judgment. And in this judgment, will it stand the test of time? Why or why not? Well, I think it will because one, it's a very historical piece. It's very important to art historians. It has interesting lines, it has interesting color. Um, and in person, it is very much more vibrant than what we have on screen here. So my judgment is um, I love this piece. The fluidity fluidity of the brush strokes, how quickly it seems like it was done, but he really captured the essence of what this early morning would be. So remember, take it one piece at a time. If you have questions, contact me and we'll go from there.